is still there. So that's something that God has given to you, but he's given to you for a purpose. Amen. It's going to be with you always. See, I know this is not normal church stuff, but I'm talking about maturing in Christ. If you want to have success and victory, you have to understand that some things that God has given you that you are uncomfortable with, that he put it there for a purpose, and it's going to be there unless he chooses to move it. You're not going to be able to pray it away. You're not going to be able to fast it away. Oh, come on, somebody. I wish some boys say amen. I wish somebody would be honest and say amen. You ought to be tired about praying to change that attitude. And you still mean as a snake. You done prayed and fasted and spoken tongues and sowed seed. And you're still hearty and huffed up. Somebody say amen. amen. So some things God gave us because of the giftings that we have. And they've been given to us. And Lucifer takes the opportunity to use it. I'm telling you what I live. He takes the opportunity to use that thing to glorify himself in your life. Because he will convince you all the time. I'm, in, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to charge you. I got you acting this way. I have you saying that. Some boys say, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to talk to mature people. I'm talking to people who really want to mature. That you know you're imperfect. And every time you think you got to get something fall apart. These are the people I'm talking to tonight. It's just about five of y'all that won't be honest about it. You done tried this and tried that and you done walk around the house seven times and then change the sheet and turn it backwards and turn the plate in another corner on the table and I ain't using that cup for the next month that I change the beer. Yet. You done did all that stuff. That cup got dust on it. You're still doing the same thing. Yeah, I feel good here. So, so sometimes you have to understand it's been given. And if you are mature in Christ, you got to walk with it like it's a gift. See, here's my message. You got to see it from the perspective that this thing is a gift. It don't feel good, but it's good. Oh, my God. Help me. Help somebody. It don't feel good, but I know it's good because it's been given to me. This attitude don't feel good. People who want to be around me all the time. I don't like how I act all the time, but I know it's good. Because I know that all things are working together for my good. And I've got to try to stop for so many times. And I'm still here. I'm tired of beating myself over the head. Trying to act like y'all want me to act. And I'm more miserable trying to be who you want me to be. I'm not going to be where I am. If I'm happy here, say amen. If you're going to live in the world in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of truth, you're going to deal with some things of the spirit. It's going to affect your mentality. If you somebody who's praying in the spirit and you living above what you understand, it's going to affect your mentality. The enemy is going to fight you in the place of truth. And I don't want to get into that because I'm working on a message for Sunday. But he's going to fight you in the place of truth. And a lot of times you will feel like you don't know what the heck is going on. Somebody say amen. A lot of times you, the thing, I'm going to say it again, the thing that you would not that you do. But that's a thorn in the flesh. That's a gift from God because of the way he gifted you. My God. The gift the gift came along with the gift. Uh, Somebody say amen. You have the gift to sing, but it came with a gift. You have the gift to preach, but it came with a gift. You have the gift of healing, but it came with a gift. You have the gift of revelation, but it came with a gift. So you can't deny the gift that was put there and make you better at what you're supposed to do. It's, it's really given to you to get you to rely on him. Because he said, lest I be exalted above measure. If you don't put something in my life to check me, I'm going to think this me. Somebody say amen. amen. But if you know the truth, if you know you don't deserve to be doing what you're doing, you know you don't qualify, you will give him the glory. And that's why God put that stuff in your life. That's why you can't change the attitude. That's why you can't change behavior. Because the behavior is intended to keep you humble. Hey, I'm talking about maturing. See what I'm trying to get you for that up. If you're going to mature, you got to walk above these things. you got to walk outside the guilt and condemnation of it. you got to walk outside the frustration and accusations that the enemy gives you every time you fall into it. Because every time you fall into it, he's going to accuse you. He is the accuser of the brethren. Where is your God now? What you did that again for? Somebody say amen. You said you was going to be honest on your last tax return. Better, 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 better. Why you got your dog on there with somebody's name? Somebody say amen. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about church people. So, 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 what I'm trying to get you to do is mature to the fact that Paul was telling us here, he had to come to the point where he matured. He accepted the fact that God had gifted him, and because he was gifted, it was going to go with some problems. And we listen too much to people who tell you that you're because your gifted problem is supposed to go away. 
And the truth of the matter is, the greater the gift, the more the problem. The greater the assignment, the more the problem. Cause no doubt I'm going to come to relationship to revelation. I'm going to see things people they never seen before. God's going to keep talking to me because I'm an apostle. I'm going to always be able to see the future. But because of that, he gifted me with a thorn. He put something in my life to keep me humble. And Lucifer used it to, 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 to make me believe he beat me up. So if I don't be mature about it, I'm going to see it as, as defeat rather than victory. I see it as, 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 as punishment rather than a gift. Be happy about what weakness God put in your life. Be happy about the thing that's keeping you praying. Be happy about the thing that's keeping you uh, uh, fasting and keeping you humble. Because if you did not have that, you'll be out of your mind. No, you won't be listening to nobody right now. This ain't going over good. If you understand what I'm saying, say amen. amen. I'm trying to get you to mature. Mature. Grow up in the spirit. Stop trying to, you know, I, I went to see a, 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 a preacher last night up there in Pompano. Stop trying to, stop trying to earn what you've been given. Come on now. Okay. Listen, who you are is who you are, and that's how God made you. The family you came in is the family you came in. That's how God made, that's who he, that's who he brought you in. You, listen to me now, the experience that you have, none of them have been a mistake. Amen. None of them. You have to accept this is who I am. This is who God made me. This is my strength. This is my weakness. I'm going to embrace them both because I know that all things are working together for my good. I know they're working together according to God's purpose. So I know in the end, since God's in control, this is going to turn out for my good. I may be, I'll not be right now, but it's going to turn out good because it's working together for good. Yeah, I may have done it again. I may have said it again. But I've got to embrace that because, let me tell you why. You want me to show you why you got to embrace it? Go ahead. We said in the Bible, right? For this thing I have restored the Lord Christ, that it might depart from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Wow. If I'm his workmanship, if I'm his workmanship, can we just, can I teach you? It's been given. It's a, it's a thorn. It can be, it's more, more than likeness in your mentality. It's making you do things you don't want to do. Somebody say amen. It's a way of thinking. It's your flesh. It's not the cigarettes. It's the thinking that makes you smoke the cigarette. Right. It's a way of thinking. It's your flesh. So the thorn is your, in your mentality. Not so much in your behavior. See, the mentality leads to certain behavior. But if you accept the fact that the thorn is there, and, and you and see, now see, God say, my ear, but God wanted to tell somebody, my grace is sufficient. I don't have time to finish it, but I'm going to do as much as I can. What God is, what is grace? My influence on all things. Grace is God's influence, is His power, His righteousness, everything. So God told Paul, listen, you have this great assignment, you have this thorn, you keep messing up, you, you, you try to figure out why you keep doing it, but you keep preaching the gospel. He said, you have to understand that my grace, my influence on your life is all you need. Because my strength is perfected when you're weak. Because if you're not weak, then I can't, I can't get no glory. Probably somebody would get this banana. I want to sign for this thing right now. If you can get that God saved you and God called you, and He said, My grace is all you need. All you need is my influence on your life. The grace may have influence upon the heart. God said, All you need is me working in your heart, directing you. You may end up at the cross. You may end up in Gethsemane. You may end up in, in Passion Week. You may end up in the Proterium. You may end up in some place that's very painful. But my grace is all you need. As long as you have my influence, my strength is going to be made perfect in your weakness. Amen. Can you understand what I'm saying? If you understand, I, I want to teach. I don't want to just start preaching again. I want to teach. You understand that. What, let me read further. You understand that as I read further. I just got two more verses to read. Verses now. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most, most gladly for us, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Now, wow. I know we are a little bit different from church. Listen to what Paul just said. He said, most gladly, I'm going to rejoice about my weakness. Why? That the power of Christ might rest upon me. How many people in here, when the shouting is stopped, can say that? When you're not in church, when it ain't about, oh yeah, hallelujah, preach apostle. When, when, when it's the real stuff and you're firmly kicking in your personal life. How many of us in here have matured enough 
that means to say I'm going to rejoice in this. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Now see, you know what? A lot of people can't clap right now. Because what you do is let the devil get you and you condemn you. And we always in that battle. Rejoice or be condemned. Rejoice or be guilty. You always in that battle. But how many people here listen to me right now that you glory in your infirmity? First of all, you have to accept it ain't going nowhere. If you accept that first, you'll stop trying to make it go away.